Okay, let's get started. Um, hello, cryotherapy community. Uh, my name is Jay Houston. I'm a VP here at Cryonext. I'm going to be taking over these webinars for Joel Cruzada, who's done a great job so far. Um, before we get started, for everyone here, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, make sure to submit them in the Q&A section, and I'll make sure to get those answered for you. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing cryotherapy business financing. Um, our guest is Jack Notabert. Uh, Jack is a senior account manager at Brickhouse Capital, but personally worked with on many deals. Um, if you didn't know, Brickhouse is a direct lender that has been servicing the health, spa, and medical industry since 2003. Uh, they provide programs for new and existing businesses in all 50 states. Brickhouse finances its first cryotherapy sauna in 2009 and has since become a leader in the industry. As for Jack, Jack has been in the equipment financing industry for 20 years. His specialty is tailoring financing programs that set up his customers for success. He has a lovely wife and two young girls, aged one and four years old. He also regularly likes to swim in freezing lakes and run in 110 degree Phoenix, Arizona heat. And last, but certainly not least, he is also a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and competes in tournaments at the master's level. He also uses cryotherapy for his own recovery and well-being needs. Jack, was that intro good? Did I miss anything? Uh, yeah, that's, that's about right. <laughs> awesome, awesome. You know, I talk to a lot of people on a daily basis about financing and a lot of the people out there that have like poor credit that are still kind of like timid to pull the trigger, they all ask me the first question, it's where do I start? Can you, can you help me answer that question for them? Well, first I just want to make sure I, I you know, mention that we specialize in equipment financing. And I think you mentioned cryo business financing. So it's hard, for, we don't really provide you know, any type of working capital to get a business started. We're mainly concentrating on the, um, the equipment side of things. We can do some, you know, some small amounts of working capital. You know, if you've got like a hundred thousand dollar machine, you know, sometimes we can do 15 to 15 to 20% in soft costs, like maybe some build out or painting or carpeting or something like that. But just wanted to make sure that, you know, your listeners uh, understood that. Um, but, you know, to get started, really somebody uh, just needs to be really kind of ready to, sorry, there's a plane flying over my my per, myself right now um they need to be ready meaning they you know of course need to make sure that they have you know that their credit's in order if they're partnering up partnering up with somebody they need to make sure that that person's uh, you know credit is in order you know it's kind of like a marriage when you have a partnership with somebody so very important to have you know to make sure you check your, your partner out as well um and then make sure that you have sufficient cash reserves to know that you know you know, it's, it's not going to always be a, a rocket start to a business. It's going to take a while. Uh, there's always going to be some unforeseen expenses. And so you just want to be ready to succeed. You don't want to set yourself up for failure. So just like in anything. Got it. Um, another question from the community is, they say that I'm a startup business with no medical professional licensing. Can I obtain financing for a machine? Absolutely. Um, you know, we've got a wide array of um, – of programs, you know, obviously it's a lot easier. And I think, you know, if you're an MD or physical therapist or even, you know, a, a nurse practitioner, we have those professional programs. Um, it does help to have some other, you know, uh, professional licensing like a chiropractor or massage therapist, um, just to show that you have some, you know, um, background in health, but it's not required. And kind of to offset that, what helps a lot of times is to have, uh, you know, well, obviously good, strong credit and, you know, decent cash reserves, you know, in the bank show that you have more than two pennies to rub together. So, um, you know, if you don't have a health background and your credit is okay and you have just a little bit of cash, can we still get you financing for a machine? Probably. Will you pay a hefty premium? Yes, because you're considered riskier from a financing, from a lender's point of view. So the answer is all, yes. But just be prepared if you don't have some, you know, certain aspects that uh, give a, an analyst comfort level that you're going to be possibly pay a premium or might maybe not get the financing. So, Got it. Makes sense. Um, and that, that was mostly for startups. And, and how old does the company need to be to, consider, to be considered an established non-startup business? Right. So our bar for non-startup status is two years and over. So if you're two years and over, you're, a non, you're considered a standard business or an existing business. If you're under two years in business, you're considered a startup. So, um, you know, we'll get some people, you know, they're maybe three months away from, you know, that 24-month mark. I'd advise we wait that three months, you know, because they can be pretty strict on that, uh, you know, on that deadline there. Could you give some examples of what your rates and terms look like for startup and non-startup businesses? So, 
You know, our rates for startups, you know, they, they, they kind of, they, they started about nine and a half percent, but you can expect to pay a premium above that for being a startup. So, you know, um, typically you're looking at, you know, if, like on a $50,000 deal, it could be a $250,000 a month uh, or $300 a month difference in, in payment because you're a startup. So, you know, it can, when you amortize it out, it could get up into the mid teens, but, or even the low teens, but um, you know, it's just, yeah, yeah. What people don't realize about startup equipment financing is just startup businesses in general, and especially in the, you know, in the kind of med spa, spa, health recovery business that, um, you know, three out of, out of 10 of them uh, sometimes go out of business. So as a lender, you know, we have to charge startups higher rates to keep the program alive. It's just, we don't know which ones, who it's going to be. <laughs> could be a divorce, could be bad location, could be competition coming up across three, three stores coming up, uh, you know, across the street with competition. We don't know, but, um, you know, startups pay, a, are going to pay always a bit of a premium over an existing business just because they're riskier, you know, just like health insurance with a 60 year old man versus a 20 year old man, you know, the 60 year old man is going to pay a lot more in health insurance chances of getting heart attack are much greater. So of course. it's more. Hopefully most people understand that. And, and how long is the approval process for something like this? So usually when I talk to someone, I can, within five to 10 minutes in a conversation, I can, within an 80% likelihood, know what's going on. I'm sometimes wrong. Um, but uh, typically approval process is anywhere from 48, you know, 24 to 48 hours if we have everything in. Uh, so quick, much faster than kind of a traditional bank would do it. And how much money is required down for a cryotherapy business or something like this? So if we're talking startups, um, typically most of the time, a lot of times we're seeing anywhere from one to two payments in advance uh, to on bigger orders over $50,000, we're seeing 20% down and maybe first and last in advance as well. So, you know, expect to pay a bigger chunk down if you're a startup. For existing businesses, um, you know, it could be one or two payments in advance. Yeah, makes sense. And what exactly do you look for in credit underwriting? So, you know, getting to the startup side of things, you know, um, we're looking obviously at credit. We're looking at the, the you know, the individual is not, uh, or the personal guarantors and owners are not too um, heavily indebted in credit card debt, unsecured debt. We like to see home ownership. We like to see a mortgage on there. It's a, it's a good indicator. For whatever reason, homeowners pay better than renters. We don't know why. Um, we're also looking at cash reserve to some extent. Um, we want to see, you know, if they want to get a good deal as a startup, we'd like to see that they could almost buy the machine themselves, but are choosing not to because they want to use, conserve their working capital for the business. That's what we like to see. If you don't have any money, you're going to pay a premium. Um, and then we also like to see that you have some kind of experience in health, whether it be a personal trainer, uh, massage therapists. We'd love to see licensing, you know, for the skin people, estheticians, licensed cosmetologists. Um, that helps, um, uh, you know, uh, chiropractors, uh, physical therapists, and of course, you know, nurses, nurse practitioners, MDs, there's like a level of, of that we like to see. But again, you don't have to have licensing. And, you know, you can just be, you know, just somebody that's working a W-2 wage for half your life, and you want to get in, do something for yourself. And you've saved your money and have done all the right things up to this point in your life and are ready to do it. So, you know, without revealing any identities, um, could you give us some examples, maybe of a photo deal that you've done, um, that you financed recently? Sure. Um, well, kind of what I see a lot, um, I see kind of two scenarios. I'll give you two scenarios. One, I see, for st this is for startups. Mm -hmm. um, I'll see, well, I'll say for, for startups. We'll just talk for a startup. You know, I can see like, uh, you know, a husband and wife duo. They have good credit. Um, you know, they have some retirement savings. Uh, they may not have um, like licensing, but you know he may have a day job. He, like I said, maybe a W two worker, and she may have been a homemaker. And the kids are now off at college, and you know she's always had an interest in health, and and that's kind of been her hobby. And so she's fallen in love with maybe cryotherapy, and maybe wants to have some other modalities. You know that's, that's a good deal because you know um, if if it doesn't work out for whatever reason, we know that we feel like you know there there's some stability there to, to get us paid. They have a his, track history of paying us. So that's kind of an, what I see a, a, 
a lot for startups. Um, but then also it can be, you know, for, for an existing business, I could even, you know, it could be, a, um, you know, uh, like an MD adding a cryotherapy to his practice or a chiropractor adding it to an existing practice, a massage therapist, you know, um, will want to sometimes just add that. Maybe they have some extra space in their building and they're like, hey, I can put this in here and, you know, do that. So those are kind of some examples of, of what I see. So we have a question here uh, from Tony. If I have an 8, 820 plus credit score, would the interest rates come in lower than 9%? Also, I have five existing spa locations. I would like to start a standalone cryo business. Would I still be classified as a new business startup? Yeah, so that's a good question. You know, um, yeah, uh, you know, if you have existing spa locations, you know, spa, spa cryotherapy, I would say they're kind of like one in, you know, and to do it, you know, I mean, it, it, they're the same thing, you know, spa and cryo, it's, it, they're both holistic, um, holistic modalities that benefit your health. And um, I would say that we would just, your six locations would be the same, you know, you know, just add crowd therapy to the back of whatever your name is. And, you know, it goes in existing business and yeah, you get a better, a better rate typically if you're doing it that way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for answering that question. Um, now I get this question asked all the time and I would just like to ask you this, you know, for the sake of, you know, the future questions um, in the community is, do you do any financing outside of the country? No. Can you, can you elaborate on that? Like, what do you, one, why not? Two, like, what do you recommend for people outside of the country, you know, equipment from us? Um, well, you know, if, if it's, um, you know, if they're from out of the country and they're moving here, um, you know, obviously it's going to take time for them to build up some credit. If they want to do a business here in the U S and the equipment's going to be located in here, we'll consider it, especially if they, especially if they have substantial cash reserves here in U S accounts, um, and they're on, um, you know, uh, a proper visa or, or what have you. So we would look at those internally now or here, here, you know, in the U S but if they're looking to take the machine uh, outside of the, of the 50 U S states, then, you know, it's not something we're going to be able to do because our contract doesn't uh, abide by whatever laws are, you know, that they're, they're in and we won't be able to recoup the equipment if they default. So it's just not something that we're set up to do. We used to be able to do it in Canada a few years ago and we just didn't have enough business and we pulled that, pulled the plug on that. I don't know anyone else who's doing it in Canada. It's just too, dark, too hard to do right now. Do you think that there's any going to be any future in Canada with financing? Because we, we have a lot of, I, yeah, you know, I hope so. I, uh, I, I, I'm sure they, they work a little differently up there. Um, I'm sure there's, I might have a, a, a referral or two that I could refer if somebody asked uh, for Canadian equipment financing. I know of a couple of can, uh, Canadian companies that I could just refer you to that I've got somewhere in my, in my files. <laughs> and uh, one of the last questions I got here is what suggestions do you have for people three to four months out from having the financing talk with Brickhouse? Well, uh, you know, um, obviously they need to really get a good uh, idea. If it's a new business, you know, they should draft a business plan. They need to really um, have things well thought out. They need to make sure they have the cash reserves. They also, you know, if they're partnering up, like I said earlier, they need to check their partner out. You know, if you go to apply and you're, you have an 800 credit score and your partner has a 500 credit score and doesn't pay anyone, well, maybe you don't probably want to partner up with that person. Um, I see that all the time and it's so sad because <laughs> all the corporation paperwork's been done and they're like, let's go. And, it's, and I'm like, you picked the wrong partner. Um, so in that case, you know, just maybe work a deal out and just, you know, just have the one owner. Uh, but, you know, save your money and, and do, you know, uh, know your area. And, you know, if you're going to do a nitrogen um, machine, know, you know, find some good vendors, know what it's going to cost you per month. Um, and, uh, you know, what do have your projections in place, be conservative on everything and make sure it makes sense on paper, draft it out, set yourself up for success, you know? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, Got another question here. What items are needed in order to finance a deal with you? So the very least for, uh, for a startup business, okay, we'll do startup and non-startup. So under two years in business, application, uh, a new business questionnaire, and 
uh, three months of, uh, of savings account statements. We want to see that personal liquidity that you may, you may have. And that can be savings, stocks, mutual funds, yep. retirement, 401k, just to show that you have something there. Those are the, would be the three main items. Uh, and then, of course, your equipment picked out. Um, for, a non, for, a non, for over two years in business, we just need an application. And um, I'd like to see three months of bank statements. Although we don't require them, it will help. You know, usually over $35,000, we like to see three months of bank statements, just the first page of each month. But, uh, but we don't have to have them. For a unit, say like the Revo Cryo, that's only twenty six nine. Um, are there? What are some requirements? So for for a two year old company, we would only need an application for two two year and up. Actually, for even an for even a startup, really just an application at the very limit, you know, at the very least. But would like to see bank statements always can help. You know, I mean, we can do it uh, at uh, you know with just an application for that for that machine. But you know, if we've got bank statements. Right. If you have a situation where maybe you do a lot of cash or, you know, you move bank accounts, then we can go with just the application. Got it. Does anyone have any other questions remaining or did I get, get everyone? Looks like I did. Jack, do you have any, do you have any other comments that you'd like to share to the community? Um, you know, uh, not really. I guess, uh, you know, we went over a lot of kind of what I, go over with people on the phone. Um, yeah. You know, uh, it's, it's pretty much it. <laughs> it's pretty meat and potatoes what we do. You know, it's equipment financing is kind of like, you know, going and getting a car at the dealership. I don't want to, you know, yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with the dealership, but it's, it's very similar to that because you're talking similar, you know, um, uh, you know, dollar amounts, although we can be a little bit pricier than like financing a car because, you know, uh, the risk for, for defaulting on a um, cryotherapy machine is much different than if you default on a car. If you default on a, if you default on a car, you know, they have a secondary market where someone can go and pick the car up and, and then it's back on the lot and they sell it and then the bank is made whole again. And, yeah. and cryotherapy deals uh, tend to go south you know, the, the landlord locks the door and no one calls us back and, you know, and it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it hurts us. And so, you know, it, it's, it's a drawn out legal, legal battle to get that machine. And then you've got to remarket it, sell it. And you can't just pick up a cryo machine like that. You have to have professionals move it. And um, so, you know, don't expect to pay, you know, like your, your 2% that you would, would at, at the dealership on a car, it's going to be a little bit higher, but that's just, you know, the way it works. Plus, you know, we also have to make a little bit of money. Yeah, of course. That works. Um, got a question from Corey here. How many years can you finance? Three, five, or more? Yeah, good question. So um, typically we do 24, 36, 48, or 60 months. Okay. So those are the typical terms. Um, also a couple of neat um, programs. Uh, we've got like a 90-day deferred program. So you know, uh, if you're looking to start up a new location or whatever, and you qualify for it, maybe a little bit harder to do for a startup unless you're like an MD or a nurse practitioner, but uh, 90 day deferred, you don't have any payments for 90 days. Great for getting started, you know, kind of getting the office up and going, getting the machine going and generating revenue. Uh, we also have step down and step up programs. You know, if you're like in an area that, um, you know, if you want to slowly build your payments up as time goes by, you can do that. Um, if you're, feel like you're going to have a lot of business up front. I don't know where that would ever happen. You can also, you can taper them down. Uh, seasonal structures, if you're in an area, you know, that's maybe busy, you know, a certain part of the year and then really slow, we can structure. We used to do this for a lot, you know, like farmers, almost like a farmer's program uh, where we can structure the payments to be higher in the busy season and lower in, in the slow season. And that's very helpful for cash flow. So we'll, we'll try and tailor, it's like you mentioned earlier, we try and really get an idea to make sure that, that we're, you know, we, we're wanting you to pay on timely and we want it to be successful. We want you to get another machine and another location and grow because it's just good for us too. So, you know, if it comes down to structuring financing to help you cash flow things through, we're, we're all about it. So. Jack, thank you so much. I think that covers everything. <coughs> um, if anybody wants to reach out to you, what is the best way to go about doing that? Yeah, you know, uh, you can go to, um, you know, you can call me at uh, 480-382-5500. Uh, 
948-5541 or just go to brickhousecapital.com and, and um, you know, you can do the quick quote through there and um, you can ask to uh, just to talk to me, Jack, and um, you know, I'll get back to you and we can have a conversation and see if uh, getting an application uh, from you it would make sense. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Jack. Um, have a wonderful day. Um, blessed Sunday and uh, yeah, I'll see you throughout the week. I'm sure. All right. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. And thanks, Jay. Yep. Bye.